there's the sun coming up over the capital. But what nation are we in? Well, for today's league lowdown, we're heading to the east of Europe and vibrant Serbia. A country of picturesque towns and cities, and no shortage of stunning scenery. A nation that's a huge exporter of fruits and of tennis stars. Where fitness is king and coffee is the order of the day. But it's at night when Serbia is said to truly come alive. From its internationally renowned music festivals to its internationally renowned nightlife, Serbia is truly a destination on many a bucket list. And it's a popular destination for fans of Football Manager. So let's investigate the teams available in the League Lowdown Guide to Serbia. Welcome back to the League Lowdown. This time we are in Serbia and of course we have dug up an expert to advise us on all things Serbian football. This time we've turned to a fellow football manager YouTuber, Room for Gaming, a Serbian native who knows the game in this part of the world inside out. We will, of course, link to his YouTube channel in the description down below for you to go and check out. But without further ado, let's have a look at the league structure in Serbia. So in Serbia, there's going to be a different league structure for the 2020-21 season than there will be for the second season that you might encounter in-game. Initially, you're going to find a 20-team top division called the Super League, where teams play each other home and away in a 38-game season. But you'll notice that a whopping six clubs are due to get relegated from that league. And that's because in Serbia, they're reducing the number of teams in the top flight from 20 down to 16. So six are going to get relegated and just two are going to get promoted from the playable division below. So let's show you how the league's going to look in your second season if you start a game in this part of the world. Once you reach season two of your football manager adventure in Serbia, well, the top flight has been reduced to 16 teams, but rather than just play each other home and away, initially they do that to create a 30 game regular season before the league splits in two. The top eight play each other again, creating another seven games. The team that are crowned champions qualify for the Champions League and the bottom eight after 30 games play each other again. And those additional seven games will determine who gets relegated down to Serbia's second tier, which is playable in Football Manager, the bottom level that is playable in Football Manager, which again for the 21-22 season has been reduced down to 16 teams. So that is how the league structure works in Football Manager. Now let's start taking a look at the teams that you could take charge of. Serbian football is dominated by two huge clubs, Red Star and Partizan. If we begin with the former, Red Star play in a huge 55,000 capacity arena, better known by its nickname, the Maracanã, named after the Brazilian stadium with the same name. This is a club that is said to be so popular in Serbia that 48% of the population reported in a 2008 poll that they were supporters of this club. They were founded in 1945, the same year as their fiercest rivals Partizan, and they have a history in Yugoslavian and Serbian football that is littered with honours. Let's start with their record in Yugoslavia first of all, where they won the Yugoslavian League 19 times and the Cup on 12 occasions as well. This is a time obviously when they were in competition with clubs from other nations such as Slovenia, Croatia, other nations in the Yugoslavian bloc. Since the Serbian League has been established, while well, Red Star have managed to win the Serbian Cup on 12 occasions and the Serbian Super League on 12 occasions as well, including winning the last three titles. So they have asserted themselves at the top of the table over the last few years. But perhaps the proudest honour that this club has won was in 1991 when they were crowned European champions, defeating France's Olympic Marseille on penalties to become the first Yugoslav club 
to be crowned champions of Europe. They have the kind of facilities that you would expect for a top club in this region. Great training facilities, excellent youth facilities, good academy coaching and exceptional youth recruitment. So taking charge of this great club clearly has one mission in mind. Winning the domestic title, well, that will be a demand. The challenge, can you take Red Star back to the top of European football? Founded in the same year, Partizan are the other giants of the Serbian game. Although they've never won the European Cup, they were appearing in finals long before their rivals from Red Star were. This team have a 32,000 capacity stadium. Let's begin by checking out their own very successful history. Six Yugoslav Cups. They won the Yugoslav League 11 times as well. They've won the Serbian Cup 10 times. And they are 16 times Serb champions as well, although they've not won it for the last three seasons. Now, perhaps the greatest European night in this club's history came in 1966 when they lost the European Cup final to Spanish giants Real Madrid. And they had to wait nearly 30 years before their rivals from across the city were then crowned champions of Europe. Red Star have gone on to appear in other European finals. They made it to the 1979 UEFA Cup final, where they lost to Germany's Borussia Mönchengladbach. So Partizan are a club that craves European success to rival their neighbours from across the city. But again, they are blessed with the kind of facilities and infrastructure that is set up to help players of football manager turn this club into a domestic and maybe a European force as well. Excellent training facilities, excellent youth facilities, good academy coaching and exceptional youth recruitment means that the best players from Serbia are going to be generated by these two clubs in all likelihood. Both of those clubs would provide a relatively good save in terms of trying to establish them as the country's premier force. The challenge in both of those two clubs is to try and win European competitions. But Serbia is not just a country made up of two clubs. There are some other clubs that are trying to provide some kind of challenge. It is a difficult proposition for any club outside of Belgrade's Big Two to be crowned Serbian champions. But one club that is at least making a good effort at trying to separate the Big Two at the top of the table is Vojvodina, a club from Serbia's second city, who play in red and white due to their historic links with Slavia Prague, and who were founded in 1914 and are blessed with a 14,500 capacity stadium. Now, this is not a club that has ever won the Serbian league since its inception, but they did win the Yugoslav league on two occasions, once in the 60s and the second time in the 1980s, but they have had more luck since the formation of Serbian football at winning the Serbian Cup. Their most recent win came in last season's competition and they are a club that are trying to establish themselves as the leading challenger to the big two from Belgrade. If you like the idea of a save where you try and push those big two Belgrade clubs, maybe even trying to overtake them, well, Vojvodina are an interesting club that you could take charge of. But if you like the idea of trying to overthrow the big two with another club from the capital of Belgrade, well, maybe Chukaritsky might be a team that you want to take a look at. Again, this is not a club that has ever won the Serbian Super League title, but they have won the Serbian Cup. And even doing that in Serbia is a tall order. They managed to do it in 2015. They were also the first Serbian club ever to undergo transfer to private ownership when they were bought out in 2012, a move that has helped steady the finances of this club and help establish them as one of the nation's major challengers to the big two. This is a club that produced the likes of international Alexander Kolarov and is one of the teams that regularly competes in European competition due to their placings in the league. But there is another club in Serbia that has been trying to prove some kind of competition to the big two, certainly this season. And that club is one that is on the rise. This is Topolia Sports Club from the city of Bačka Topola, which is right up there on the Hungarian border. And this club draws its support from the Hungarian communities in the north of Serbia. 
Now, again, this is a club that when it comes to major honours, they have a trophy cabinet that is waiting to be filled, but they finished fourth last season and they were only promoted to the top division back in 2018-2019 season. This is a part of the world that Dusan Tadic hails from. This is also the club that produced the likes of giant target man striker Nikola Zigic, who Birmingham fans will remember with fondness. So if you like the idea of taking charge of a club that is on the up, that has recently been promoted to the top division, and is proving itself one of the challengers at the top of the table, well, TSC might be a club that you could take charge of. But that's enough of all the challengers to the big two. Let's have a look at some sleeping giants of Serbian football. Perhaps no clubs outside Belgrade's big two are truly considered giants in Serbian football, but there are some teams out there that have experienced golden moments in their history. Unfortunately, two of those are in Serbia's unplayable third division, so you'd either have to hope that they got promoted after a season or wait until additional league add-ons in Serbia become available through the Steam Workshop. One of those teams is Oblic, for whom a Phoenix club play in the third division, and the other is OFK Belgrade, who, perhaps not a giant of Serbian football, but certainly of Yugoslavian football, they experienced some very successful periods. They won the Yugoslav Cup on four occasions in the 50s and the 60s. And in the 1930s, they dominated Yugoslavian football, winning the top division on five different occasions. If you do want a team that is playable from the start of the game, well, you could head down into the second division and take a look at Jagodina, who have been in the Serbian Cup final in two consecutive years, and actually managed to win it in 2013. In 2014, they also qualified for the Europa League through their league position as well. And this is a club that's experienced some financial hardship, bounced down through the divisions because of that, but is now back and you're able to take charge of them in the playable second tier. If you like the idea of taking charge of a club that has an historic past outside of the ones we've already mentioned, then maybe you could take a look at Radnički Niš. They're currently competing in the Serbian Super League, but over recent seasons they've bounced their way through the divisions to make it up from the third tier to that level, and they've done a good job at competing at that level too, having finished third in the table during the 2017-18 season and second in the table a season later. They were only fifth last season, but this is a club that has a little bit of history being linked to the communist movement and founded by communist activists in their area. They're also a club that has a little bit of European pedigree as well. They managed to reach the 1982 UEFA Cup semi-finals. Unfortunately, they lost to Hamburg at that stage, but not until they'd beaten Napoli on their way to those semi-finals. They're not currently one of the biggest clubs in the Serbian top division, but they're certainly one that posed quite a challenge to fans of Football Manager and would like to guide another team that's an historic name in Serbian football and take them to the top of the table. If you are looking for a team from the lowest playable league in Serbia for your next Football Manager adventure, then one team to potentially check out is Borac Čačak. This is a team that's been in the Super League, although has suffered consecutive relegations, but last season they were promoted back to the second tier on a playable in football manager when they were in the Super League. They had some finishes inside the top six, almost reaching the group stages of the Europa League in 2008 before they were knocked out by Ajax in the round before the group stages. But if you like the idea of taking charge of one of Serbia's smaller clubs, gaining promotion to the Super League, and then trying to take on the big two from there, well, this is a club that certainly might interest you. So that is the League Lowdown Guide to Serbia, a nation where there's certainly a challenge taking charge of one of those big two and trying to compete at the top of the European game. But perhaps an even greater challenge is taking charge of one of the teams outside Belgrade's dominant powers and trying to establish yourself at the top of the game. Meanwhile, we're going to see you very soon as we take another country and make it the focus of our next League Lowdown. <laughs>